In this video, we're gonna go over what is the best automation test tool for you and your team. Two related questions I always get asked quite often are, what is the best automation test tool out there? And what framework should I use to automate a web application? That's why I was really happy when this question actually came up on a recent webinar I co-hosted with Paul Grizzafi. And I thought the answers we gave were really good, so I just wanted to share it with you also in a video. It boils down to this main point that there really is no best automation test tool. Uh, both Paul and I agreed that there is no best tool. Remember though, you're not looking for the best tool that I would recommend or what Paul would recommend. You're really looking for the best test tool for you. So that's really what you're looking for, a tool that fits what you're doing and your team's needs. So there are three main things Paul recommends when you try to evaluate a new test tool to see how it's gonna fit in with you and your team's needs. And the first one is, What's your strategy and goals? Always look at your strategy and goals and decide what it is that you're trying to get done. Because depending on what tool you select is gonna limit or expand what can be done with test automation. You also wanna make sure what problems that there are that you're trying to solve with the automation. So if you're trying to solve API type testing or automation tools, that's gonna to limit the amount of test tools that you should be focusing on for your team you also wanna make sure who is your audience, who's gonna be using your test tools. For example, do you have programmers that are actually gonna be doing your testing? Or is it gonna be testers that really aren't programmers that you're gonna select a test tool for? It's a big difference between whether or not you have hardcore developers or not, because most likely if you have hardcore developers and they're using Java or they're using certain IDEs, you wanna use a test tool that integrates tightly with those particular developers' ecosystems. But if you have testers, just testers that are gonna be doing testing, they may choose a different test set that may not necessarily be exactly what the developers are using. Once again, it all depends on what your team is doing. Another great question to consider when deciding on a test tool is what is your tech stack? You really need to know this because depending on what test tool you select, that will determine on what you'll be able to test. For example, a lot of times people select Selenium and that's great, but Selenium is just for web-based automation. So if you plan on doing any other type of automation, Selenium is not going to be the right API for you. You'll have to select another API or cobble together a solution that includes both Selenium and maybe rest assured that helps you test rest services, something along those lines. Or if you need to automate a thick client application like WPF or Windows applications, that's once again going to limit the selection that you'll have when choosing a tool that's going to be right for your team. And usually when you choose a non open source vendor based test tool, usually get more options. A lot of times a tool like UFT or SmartBear covers more than web applications. They have a lot of add-ins for a lot of type of other automation for SAP or mainframe or API or web all within one test flow. But if you're just testing a web-based application, that might be overkill and that then will help you select a tool that's more right for your team. Also when selecting a tool, you also want to bake in future proofing for your automation selection. So you really want to think less about what is the best software testing tool and more about what's the best tool that's appropriate for you and also builds in future proofing. This will allow your framework to evolve with you when something changes in your application over time. You also need to think about scalability. Make sure that you're not baked into a certain process or tool that's not going to grow with you over time. And one way to do this is to look at your product roadmaps. This is something I failed to do earlier on in my application. We start a new development on a brand new application using AngularJS, um, HTML5, and everything was great, selected Selenium. And then over time, we realized, oh, we also need to test APIs. And then a year and a half later, oh, we also need to integrate with thick client applications. Because I didn't look at the product roadmap early on, I didn't realize that. So I didn't anticipate that within the framework. And because of that, I had to change gears midway through come up with another solution to help actually automate the thick client applications as well. When considering your product roadmap and the future of your development project, you want to keep in mind who you have employed. What's the current skills of your team? And what are the goals of your team? And what is your hiring profile? Is there a training profile? Do you have a budget? So if you select a certain tool that you'll be able to get training for your team, or what happens if you select a really obscure test tool or technology and you realize when you're hiring people that no one has these skills and you're gonna to have to train them. And it makes it very hard to fill open recs. That's one thing you actually should definitely look at. So it's not as easy as I'm just gonna select this tool. You also wanna make sure you have support for that tool so that once you select it, 
not just the only person on the team that can support it because you're the only one that knows it. So always keep long-term vision in, in mind when selecting a tool for your organization. Not only what's best for you, but also what's going to be best for your team. And also, are these skills that you're going to be able to fill for open recs that you may have down the line in the future? The best way really to find out what test tool to use in my experience is to actually do a proof of concept. I'm not sure more people don't do this, but select a tool and then just run a quick two-week sprint on that tool. Run it through the whole life cycle of your sprint with all your team involved. Get their input and see if it actually meets the needs of your team. Because to you, it may be an excellent tool, but when you roll it out to other people, you may realize that this isn't going to work. I didn't anticipate these other issues or these other needs. So it's really critical. If you could do it in just two weeks, it's going to save you a lot of time rather than waiting months and months and then roll it out to your team. So the quicker you can get feedback from your team members doing a proof of concept, probably the best off you're going to be when you select a tool. So those are some top considerations you need to think about when selecting a tool. Hope it helps. And I actually have a resource available to you based on all things automation that you can grab when you go to this URL. Check it out.